Time now uh, for some squawk picks. Our next guest thinks that the 2023 tech rally uh, will come to an end, but there will be a buying opportunity later in the year as new picks AMD, Uber, and Extreme Networks. Paul Meeks uh, joins us now. He's independent solutions wealth management portfolio manager and finance professor at uh, the Citadel. Paul, you, you still own NVIDIA, but I, I think in your view, uh, it, it has gotten a little frothy in AI-related stocks and therefore maybe, uh, to a lesser extent, to tech in general. Yeah, I think at this AI rally that we've seen, of which NVIDIA has been the biggest beneficiary, has driven the values of these stocks to points where if you own tech stocks, if you run a tech fund like I do, you have to own them. But would I add to positions today? Absolutely not. And Joe, I know that's your favorite word. And if I was told to buy that stock fresh today, I absolutely would not. So I hold them. Hopefully we continue to rise with the tide. But I do think that there's probably some comeuppance in some of these names. And maybe the AI rally sort of fiddles it out. And if you want to get these stocks, I bet later in 2023, you can get them at least a bit lower. Well, you, a lot of what uh, informs your opinion right now has to do with the Fed, too, and, and just that, how difficult it's been at this point to, uh, to really uh, get inflation under control. And you think that there, there will be no cuts. You think cuts would be the best thing, cuts in interest rates, till the end of, till late next year, uh, and there may be more increases, and none of that's good. That could cause a... Uh, some type of um, correction. Not a significant one, not to the October lows, but one that you might be able to uh, to buy. Yeah, that's right. You know, everybody's talking about AI, and sure, that is a driver for the tech names and other companies are related to that. But Joe, the biggest driver of all, the most powerful factor for all these tech and aggressive growth stocks that have caused the rally uh, thus far in 2023 is the expectation that the Fed will pivot and start to lower rates. I don't see that happening. I think that the Fed may take a pause on June 14th. However, they may go back and raise rates uh, later on in the year because the job market is so tight. And when the job market is this tight, you can't win the inflation game and you can't be comfortable turning around and lowering rates. And the problem is these tech stocks, almost regardless of the investment theme, how great it is, really crave low and falling rates. Well, and if Paul, we don't get that, I think but, that we'll have to push out, uh, you know, really a great case to buy these stocks into next year when we do get the pivot. In the last couple of weeks, we did make the point that you look at the, the five or six horsemen of tech and, and the performance over the past year or 18 months, that performance has been in the face of 500 basis points, 525 basis points of increases. So we said that that, that entire narrative already has, is sort of in dispute. You're saying, okay, from here, higher rates are going to be a problem. Why haven't high rates, why haven't 500 basis points of increases, uh, how have they been able to do so well, those tech stocks, in that period? Because it, it, it didn't yeah. affect it. We heard it would. We heard multiples would have to contract. Rates are going up. Can't buy the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the best performing average. Why? Well, I think the key is not what's happening today. We're always investing for six to nine months out minimum. And if you take a look, at least until recently, at Fed funds futures, you know, the uh, investment consensus that rates were going to fall and actually have a couple of cuts before we get to December 31 of this year. And so I think that is the deal. And I think that one of the reasons that we've had a little bit of retracement in tech is that that is becoming a thought that is increasingly might be taken off the table because the uh, pivot may not happen. We'll plateau rates here. We probably won't start to lower them to next year. And when that becomes a foregone conclusion, Joe, I do think we have some problem in tech land because this is what the expectation had been and may be changed to what will be in six to nine months okay. out. So, but you like those three stocks that we mentioned. Uh, you, 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 I wonder if it really, I bet you NVIDIA could say something where you would buy it today. So I don't think that's even absolute. I think, I think that's, that doesn't work there. <laughs> there. There's probably something they could say where you'd say, you know what? 
okay, I, I would buy in, in Nvidia. So it's not a, that's not absolute either. But the, the ones you do, the one the ones you do, like what what'd you say, Uber, AMD, and. Yeah, no, man. Yeah. Well, it look like it. If you're going to buy AI-related semiconductors, AMD is also expensive. Also has the same NVIDIA driver, but it's not NVIDIA expensive. Yeah. Extreme, I like as a data networking play to benefit taking share from Cisco, relatively inexpensive. And Uber, at long last, you know, Uber has been floundering for years. They're yeah. taking a ton of share in rides from Lyft. Lyft is a real troubled company. Okay. And Uber will probably go from break even this year to making a buck earnings per share next. All right, got it. So at the end of the day, uh, going forward, you would absolutely buy.